Oh, I just realized I made a big boneheaded mistake. Look, I forgot to put the bearing in. Hello folks and welcome to NetCruiser RC. Today we're going to do a follow up on the Arma Creighton. So last video that you would have saw me run this, I bashed the crap out of it, did those huge jumps, almost hit a drone out of the air. <laughs> I did a lot of hard front end collisions, landings, as well as I was diffing out the front a lot. And at the end of that video, you would have saw no front diff action whatsoever anymore. These have easy access differentials, so I should be able to just pop a few screws out and then pull it out and we'll take a look at... If it's a broken external gear, like a ring or a pinion, I will have to go buy that. I've never had the diffs out of this since it was new. I really do need to invest in a power driver. Still don't have one. Okay, so this, yeah, that's just to get at the, this so that you can get your sway bar out of the way. So I need to get these bottom ones out. It's kind of dark in there. But there's two, there's a screw there, screw there, top and bottom. In order to be able to slip the diff out around the axles you do have to take the shocks off so it's about a five screw five to eight screw access it's not super easy access but easy enough i should really find some of these and link them because that's like the the best thing ever is to just be able to not use your fingers to get these things out of here This is not an RC specific tool. This is just something that I've used for years and years and years, ever since my like PC repair days. And uh, yeah, very useful. So these diff screws, they're all the same length, so you don't have to worry about those. And now this outer cover just pops out and I should be able to slip it out under or up and around the sway. Yeah, under the sway. Okay, now, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to see. Seems like I've got, yeah, seems like I've got actual ring and pinion still meshing okay. Oh, they are straight cut. I thought they were spiral cut. What are the spares that I have? I had spares somewhere. Here. Straight cut. 43 straight cut. All right, well, I might have everything I need to fix this get to have your own kind of hobby shop after a while if you want to keep some parts on hand it's always a good thing you don't have to go run to the hobby shop every time you break something now in order to get this out I wonder if I can do it because these are extra long axles on the crate and I wonder if I can do it without um, taking the shocks out it doesn't look like it I think I'm still gonna have to take a shock off to be able to pivot it out so you take out this little capture screw and then you can slide the pin out and you slide the pin out okay so that's that goes with that that's the shock pieces and then you can pop this up and out and what that just allows it to get a bit more droop so that you can pull the diff out and then pivot it out of the way yeah so that's all you need to do. And yep, it is broken inside. To me, that's not too bad because I have all of the pieces to fix it. This is all of the inside gears here to fix it. 220028. Yeah, let's take it apart and see what's wrong inside. While I'm also in here, I'll be able to thicken up the, uh, the front diff fluid. Okay, it seems that I've either broken an outdrive or a pin because I shouldn't, I haven't even taken it apart yet. I should not be able to just pull that out like that. So something, whatever holds this outdrive in is broken, either whether it be the gear or the pin. So we'll take it apart and we'll see. Take these four outer screws out. So just loosen those off until you feel them disengage because these are just screwing into the plastic diff cup into the plastic outer, then I should be able to just lift it off. Okay, lift that off. I still have my, make sure you uh, keep your seal. Also check to make sure that your seal hasn't ruptured, because if that breaks, then it'll leak out all the diff fluid. Inspect all your gears. That looks okay. Looks like there's some grit inside, but it's not too, too bad. But I'm gonna have to clean it up when I fix it anyway. I'm gonna lift out your spider gears. 
and my spider gears look okay, typically what happens, or at least on the Traxxas ones, you just smack, you'd slap the center or you'd snap a tooth off of the spiders. These all seem, but yeah, when I turn this, that should turn these and that's not happening. So I'll pull that out. And pull this out. And oh yeah, there, there it is. I broke that in two. There's the culprit. So that's why I don't have a front differential anymore is because that snapped in two. That's not a bad fix whatsoever. So I'll just clean out the diff cup. I have that gear. It is included in this kit. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull these out. Pull out the broken pieces. Oh, it looks like a broken O-ring too. Pull the pin out. Yep, broke the O-ring. And then I need to drain out this diff fluid. So let me just uh, get a new rag. Fold it over a couple times and let my diff cup drain out in. Now I'll be able to pull this out too. Yeah, that all looks okay. Clean off the bearing. Yeah, and then just let the get the diff fluid out. So I have to replace this gear, this O-ring. Like this pin is okay, the bearing's okay, the outdrive is okay. It's just those two parts. And then um, yeah, clean out the the diff cup. Now, if you wanted to be extra super thorough, I suppose I could. you could degrease this. But since mine seemed like a, a pretty clean break, like it wasn't that a gear broke and then it chewed itself up and left a bunch of shrapnel inside. It was just a clean snap of a gear. So I can just clean that out and then refill the diff cup and rebuild. I have the diff cup mostly cleaned out. Now I just need to access to my new parts. So yeah, I'm having to, uh, this is a full diff rebuild kit. Now, mo under most circumstances, you don't have to rebuild your full diff. So I'm just gonna take out the parts that I need to fix this one. Okay, there's my gear, there's my O-ring. That's all I need. Pop these back in here for another day. So yeah, I'm not gonna do a full, why would I build a full diff when you don't have to? I have everything on hand to build another one of these entire complete diffs. But still, in order to fix this one, I would have to go and buy that one part, which I'm not entirely sure that you can do. I think you have to buy that full set of gears. So whatever, you'll just mix and match as you go along and uh, fix up what you need. So first thing will be slip this up through. Oh, I can look on this side to see how it's done. Yeah, so if you don't know, look on this side because this side will be the same the way it's built. Okay, so the pin rides on top of the O-ring. Okay, seems like a big wear point. So it's O-ring first, over the shaft. Pop that down in. And then your pin. Now I always find getting these pins in is difficult. So this again is where this tool becomes very useful because there's really tight tolerances in here. You gotta get that in, slip it in, just like that. I was surprised that that pin rides on top of that O-ring like that. I guess that's just how they've designed it. Gear goes down on top. Well, see my pin slipped. I wasn't engaged fully so that I could see that it didn't really click in. So you have to keep the pin centered and you have to align this and you'll feel it when it, when you get there. And when it's flush, when the, when the outdrive is pretty much flush with the top, it is built properly. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of diff fluid. I got 50,000, I think I'm gonna put 50,000 in the front and then I'll go buy some, um, and then we'll probably put 100,000 in the rear, but I don't have 100,000, I have to go buy it. So I'm just gonna start by putting some of this in for now, just a little bit, just to get it coated. That's 50,000, I can't even imagine working with a million. Like when you do it with a million, it must just be ridiculous. You have to like scoop it out with a spoon. So I just want a little bit down in there and now I can put my spider gears in. So these go with the rounded side down. Okay, there's first side in. Now second side. And you 
got to rotate it. Oh, well, the pin has a cross brace in it. I forgot about that. Out they come. So the pin, the center pin, has a little cutout. So you got to make sure that this one has to be facing the top then. Yeah. And then they got these little shims on. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, that should do it. There, just click down into place. Okay, there we go. Now I just need to fill it up. I know we've been through a couple of these on my channel already, but they're, I mean, they pretty much all RC cars that have a, a gear diff are built like this. Depend, they're all a little bit different about how the shims are and where they put their O-rings and seals and it, what's made of plastic and what's made of metal. But overall, the, the way a differential works, open diff like this is all the same. And how you tune them is by what fluid you run in them. So I'm putting a 50,000 weight in, which this will be five times thicker than what came by the factory for the front diff. And now I should really thicken up the center as well. But I likely won't right away because one unfortunate thing about the Armas is that the center differential has to be accessed from taking a bunch of screws out of the bottom and then lifting the whole thing out. It does not have an easy access center. It has easy access front and rear differentials. The, the center is a bit of a pain in the butt to get at. Oh, I just realized I made a big boneheaded mistake. Look, I forgot to put the bearing in. So now, now I'm missing a bearing on that side and I just filled it all up with fluid. Frig sakes, man. Now I gotta take it apart again. Oh, that sucks. It's actually going pretty quick, but yeah, I gotta... Take that back out, put this on here. Then I can put it back. Then repeat. Holy cow, did we do it? Wow, that went pretty easy. Now I just have to refill the, uh, the diff fluid that I lost. Yeah, okay, putting this on. Now, how do you know that you got your screws lined up with your holes? You don't. It is a little tricky. I think I was pretty spot on though. But you can feel them engage. This is where you gotta be a little bit careful. You don't wanna over torque these down because you, again, I've said this before when rebuilding diffs, but you're just screwing into a plastic diff case or diff cup. So, you know, go slow, do a, do a couple of revolutions of each screw. Just keep going around in a cross pattern. Because you want to make sure you get that on nice. So guys, this is part of the RC hobby. If you bash hard, you break. And, you know, you want to be able to have the skills and parts on hand to fix your own rigs. Because it gets expensive enough having to buy parts. If you're having to pay someone to fix your RC car, it's definitely in your best interest to learn how to do your own mechanical fixing on your RC car. Or electrical fixing. All that type of stuff or hang around with someone who knows that they can teach you or watch YouTube videos that teach you how to do it because uh, yeah, it'll just save you money in the long run and give you skills that can be applied to various other things. Uh-oh, what side did that come off of? I don't know. This is something that was not on my other Armas and it's a little shim that I don't remember what side it came off of. Whoops. Oh yeah, we got diff action now. Heck yeah. It's fixed. I just have to put it in the truck now. I want to add some black grease or something around the outside of the ring when you put it back in. Okay, so there's still a little bit of grease down in the diff case, but you want to put some more on. I still have this, a, a lot of black grease from building my Techno EB410, so I'm just going to use that. It's a grease. It's different than your diff fluid. This is where I always get confused about which side does it go on. I think it went this side. The shim should not go on this side. It should go on this side because that would push the whole thing towards the the pinion that's inside so you don't want to shim it off the pinion you want to shim it towards the, sh the pinion getting this on is a little bit trickier because you've got this in the way and you're trying to get your drive shafts in at the same time that drive shaft is in gotta get this one in like that just pops down in place I think we're in business. Put this back on. This piece is what actually holds it in its proper positioning. So you wanna make sure that, that it actually does sink down right in where it needs to be before you start putting your screws in. There, just fill down into place. 
and we're good. Put your screws in and we're done. Make sure that it is fully seated. You're looking for the little gap. You don't want much of a gap around the seal. It's got the little, you can tell. I don't know how well the lighting is in here even with my extra lights on, but I wanna get that in place. Don't forget to put your shock back. I still wanna do the upgrades on this thing, but I haven't yet. I've got that, the V3 battery box and all the other little V3 bits that I just haven't done because in order to do that, I have to take out the battery box, the receiver tray, the servo, the ESC. It's just a pain in the butt when everything's kind of working. I will eventually, but there's no rush to do it. Again, you're screwing plastic in the plastic here, so just make sure that you're not feeling anything, any weird binding or anything like that. That is the one benefit of doing all your screwing by hand is that you can feel what's happening, but it is a bit of a arm workout. One last thing, which is put your shock back. Sometimes getting this pin in through the ball cup is a little bit difficult, but you can just, you just gotta feel around for it. Trial and error a little bit. There. There. So yeah, you wanna have no load on your suspension if possible. Put your little grub screw back that holds the pin in. That's it, fixed. Okay guys, if this was helpful, you hit that like button. If you're new around here, subscribe. Leave a comment down below if I did something wrong or if you have a question about something I did. And as always, thanks for watching.